This is how you turn a blue wave into a ripple. You don't apologize. They just kept kneecapping themselves. And then Democrats can be like, wait, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? Give me that crowbar. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> what do you think? Question of the day. Was there really a blue wave? How would you rate this latest election, the midterms here? Um, let me just say, but before we get to your op opinion, uh, before we get to my opinion, the objective answer is no. <laughs> Democrats incredibly, incredibly uh, confident, optimistic, and Republicans privately back to pessimism and thinking the House is probably gone. Who are and you talking to? Maybe can hold on to the Senate, but the blue wave feels stronger now than it did 30 days ago. <laughs> it is. The rankings releasing right now give the Democrats even more reason to feel bullish about their odds of taking the big prize, control of the House of Representatives. Midterm elections that will reveal whether the much discussed blue wave is real, mm. and whether it is big yeah. enough to deliver one or even both houses of Congress to the Democrats. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, it's also scaled back from when they were like, we might even win the Senate. Uh, <laughs> so and there's Kevin the other way. <laughs> oh yeah. It, 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 well, I, I would say this, it's it's uh, there are a couple of different takeaways. Let's take away number three. This wasn't a historic election at all by any stretch of the imagination for either party. I really do think this was as far as if you're just looking at yeah. pure politics. Win some, lose some. Uh, Republicans picked up some some governorships. Uh, Democrats, of course, they picked up. How, how do we know? Do we have the final uh, seat count in Congress? Exactly, because another tallying up some more votes. I thought there was one more, or maybe two. Okay, more all right. So, so it's it's, yeah. it's in the twenties, but uh, yeah. midterms very important to know. Usually result in the party in power losing seats. Yeah, That's every time. Of, it's, it's yes. every single time. Now historically, if you look at that unpopular presidents, it's been an average of more than thirty. It's somewhere around thirty-seven yeah. seats for unpopular presidents. Big swings. President Obama lost sixty-three Yikes. House seats <laughs> mm -hmm. and six Senate seats. That's insane. Uh, that's what you would call historic. Okay, so I think I actually have some numbers. Yeah, Obama 63, Clinton 52, Eisenhower 48, Ford uh, 48, Johnson 47, Truman 45, uh, Bush in 2006 30, Truman 29. Wow. So yeah, these these wow. are significant numbers. In comparison, yeah. actually, Republicans did really pretty well in only losing I think it's 28 seats as a final count in the House, and then gaining some Senate seats. Objectively, the blue wave that they it was it was more of a ripple. They got some seats, yeah. but it wasn't something that's going to be changing the entire political landscape. Here's some here's some real. You're not going to hear this from the people who are just 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 the cheerleaders for Donald Trump, and you're not going to hear this from the people on the left who want to say, that, "Oh, there was a blue wave," right? I've seen I've seen people saying, "Ah, it was a red wave." Ah, oh, no, it was a blue wave. No, no, the truth is, it was win some, lose some. But here, here's here's the Midwest. If we look at that, it's kind of what I talked about with the last general election. Let's not think that the blue wall in the Midwest was broken down by President no. Donald Trump because they all of a sudden became Republicans or conservatives. They just didn't like Hillary Clinton, and they thought that Donald Trump was going to give them more free crap because you're talking about unions. You are talking yeah. when you talk about unions in the Midwest, okay, particularly in Michigan, you're basically talking about glorified welfare recipients. <laughs> and if it would have been Bernie versus Donald Trump, Bernie would have won. So let's not count on that for Donald Trump in 2020. We see that here at the midterm when it goes back to like, more money, please, more money, please. Every well, single okay, time. They will yeah. eat themselves alive completely. Uh, takeaway number two, I think this is really important and not a lot of people are talking about this in the media. The, the, the single biggest thing uh, that, that, that Democrats, the biggest factor that Democrats thought would help them undeniably is what hurt them the most, the yeah, lynch absolutely. mobbing of Brett Kavanaugh. <laughs> that is monumental. That, really, that backfired beyond all belief. It was gonna be a absolutely. blue wave yeah. until Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah. And uh, I think actually, yeah, all, all battleground states, all swing state Democrats who oppose Kavanaugh, every single one was defeated. Wow. Uh, the one I think was it was Manchin who supported uh, Kavanaugh. Yeah, yeah. He supported yeah. Kavanaugh. Reelected, and he was right. reelected. I so I love this. I love that there are consequences for their actions because that's how voters tell politicians how they should act in the future. Right? It's not right. just us getting angry and then going to the polls and reelecting the people that made us angry. They actually voted them out of office. Yes. There has to be a price to pay when you screw around with stuff like this. Right, and I think that's I think that is really important to know. We're going to get, we'll get into more kind of the cultural ramifications in a little bit. But again, Kavanaugh they thought was a deadlock. They yeah. thought had, we're, we're coming in off of Me Too. Harvey Weinstein is a germ. Oh, Bill yeah. Cosby is we a germ. This, no Let's problem. just accuse this man of being a gang rapist, yeah. and we won't get him confirmed. We'll go into we'll we'll sail through the midterms, and then everyone said, hold on a second, that could be my dad or my brother or my yeah. son, and yeah. you just want to say rape. By the way, again, the FBI probe, nothing. There is only <laughs> evidence to the exact. Opposite of what they've said. What's Christie? What's uh, Dr. Christie? Dr. Dr. Christie Ford, what is she up to? Like 9.8 <laughs> million on her GoFundMe? <laughs> Why would she lie? There's no reason. What, poss <laughs> what possible motivation could she have for lying? I don't know. That would be the judge. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. think of uh, 12 points, a million deal. reasons, I think. It, yeah, exactly. The number just keeps going up. Like I said, I'm McDonald's. <laughs> How many frauds served? Uh, <laughs> Takeaway, I think the main takeaway here, too, is uh, so mid midterms are a little bit different. 
than general elections, like yeah. 2016. More about strategy, definitely more about funding, more about a, a ground game, looking at districts, as opposed to national elections, which you can at least um, factor in some cultural outliers. That's how yeah, President absolutely. Donald Trump won. Yeah. That's why the polls were much more inaccurate in 2016 than this one, because yeah. there's a cultural influence that takes place. A again, also much lower turnout with midterms. So you typically have people who are much more politically right. motivated, people who are more politically yeah. inclined, people who take an interest in the political process. With general elections, that's not necessarily the case. The closest the closest thing we had to a general election, I would say comparable to Trump Clinton, last night was Beto Cruz. Yeah, this yeah. was huge. Uh, this was, it's it the was closest. A test tube. It, it was a test tube, exactly. It was the closest thing to an anti Trump, pro Hillary celebrity yeah. blitz like we saw in, the, in 2016. Full on media assault on Cruz and unwavering support. For Beto. I mean, they pushed so hard for him. So I think we have hard. a collage here of uh, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Was it the, the night of the election after <laughs> after after voting had closed? Was it Beyonce is like, don't forget yeah. to go out and vote for Beto? <laughs> Whoops. What? I'm glad she was pushing for Where are all the non-contributing <laughs> ladies at? Uh, <laughs> ouch. And by the way, Democrats raised 69 million for Beto. That's I think almost 20 million oh. more than, than Ted Cruz. So again, if you look at this, people are saying, well, they were trying to flip it purple. And if you look at how they kind of won the cities with Beto, that, that's not new. That's always how, exactly. how Texas yeah. has been won. Cruz won this election the same way he's won most of his elections as far as which kind of districts voted for him. Uh, the difference here is, that, and by the way, this doesn't include the free advertising. No, it doesn't. Colbert, Ellen, no, uh, what, what else was it? Bill Maher, bag, not, yeah. a, not afforded to Cruz at all. He he still didn't win. What we said would happen is actually happening. I think Alyssa Milano tweeted out earlier, uh, hashtag Beto 2020. Like, it's happening already. They want him to run for president after he got beat by S Ted Cruz. But, but <laughs> Texas in. dodged a bullet. We've got to be honest. That was very close. I hope our side is seeing this. We've talked about this before. And, you know, Beto's out there on a skateboard, and he's doing Ellen yeah. and Colbert. Yeah. <laughs> These people need to see how they can reach their audience. Yeah. And this is the well, way they it's need done to get better now. at this. This yeah. is it. Yeah. I mean, uh, networks and Cable news with 72-year-olds buying po pocket catheters. That's not the, That's done. the way to get to Thank the audience. I, I got to say, when Gold. Wilford Brimley comes out and talks about diabetes, I just find myself <laughs> in a comfortable trance. Diabetes, <laughs> just <laughs> to, to, to sum this up, last night, it, historically, low gains for the opposition party. The primary issue, like we talked about, the left that they, that they thought was going to turn the tide is actually what hurt their blue wave, Kavanaugh. And finally, if you're going to look at this as some kind of a cultural uh, weather stick to see which way, I know weather sticks don't measure which way the wind are blowing at this point. Uh, you know, I don't even know how a weather stick works, honestly. I saw one in Sky Mall and I thought, uh, how is this going to function? It seems as though this is very underpriced for something that can tell me the future. Uh, if you're going to actually... <laughs> and bankrupt. Is that the like, two sticks that <laughs> they, like, point you to water? That's the water divination. Yeah, I water don't know witch. what that water is. Totally all. different thing. But if you're going to look at this culturally as any kind of an indicator uh, as to where we're headed, the, the results here are pretty clear. The leftist, the elitist media, uh, uh, Hollywood, the entertainment complex was completely rejected. The petri dish for that was Beto versus Cruz. And of course, as you look culturally in in the American societal fabric at large, Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh, Beto, Cruz. These are clear cut examples that people are still firmly in the Trump camp. And I'm not even talking about conservatives. I'm talking about people who are saying, you know what? Okay, I'm tired of appeasing the left. I, again, appeasing crocodiles is futile. I saw some conservatives come out and say, well, you know what? Maybe Kavanaugh should step down now so we can heal the nation. No, no, this is how you do it. This is how you turn a blue wave into a ripple. You don't apologize. Trump won by, yes, he's bummed. Bastic. Yes, he's kind of an ass, but the last thing he did was apologize to scumbags who would eat him alive That's anyway. Right. And if you look at this election, you see the exact same trend. What helped Republicans? What kind of stop? What stopped the bleeding as it relates to the Democrats gaining any kind of ground? Kavanaugh. They shot themselves in the foot. So terrible analogy there because there really was. They, they basically shot them and they were bleeding more. So mm -hmm. I'm talking about Republicans were kind okay, of, they just kept kneecapping themselves. And then Democrats were like, wait, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? Give me that crowbar. Ah, ah, ah. And they just decided it was how, who could out call, inflict self-harm. If you're going to look at this election, you can look at the micropolitics, you can look at the macro. Things haven't changed since Donald Trump. And I think if you compare it to even the Tea Party with, with Barack Obama, they overestimated their influence and Barack Obama won in a, yeah. a pretty big election, pretty handily. I think Donald Trump wins handily going forward. But you tell me what you think. Is this, is this a victory? Is it a defeat? And um, I don't know. I don't really care because we don't have a crystal ball or a weather stick. Hey there, YouTube viewer. You like Samantha B? Of course not, because you've actually made it to this end card. You are a miracle of the internet. I would say subscribe or hit the notification button, but I don't really know what that means on YouTube. You might not get notified anyway, but you can join up at ladderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. That's mug with this wonderful hand etched mug. And you get to watch not only clips, but the full one hour daily show every single day. That was redundant because I said daily, but every single day, but we're going to keep it anyway because we shoot these end cards a whole lot in one afternoon. 
eh, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel with this one.